You want to hear a funny joke? Taven Bryan and Andrew Wingard, these two clowns right here, are both going to be Jacksonville Jaguars in 2021. Now, before I actually get onto the actual 53-man roster breakdown that Urban Meyer and the Jacksonville Jaguars have released today, let me talk about some notable cuts that were made today, including nine wide receivers that were cut and only five making the roster. But here's some notable cuts. Doug Costin, Laquan Treadwell, Quincy Williams, Colin Johnson, Josh Jones, Gerard Wilson, Jeff Cotton Jr., preseason stud, Jalen Camp, our six-round pick, Philip Dorsett and Farrow Cooper. Now, with a lot of these guys, I understand that none of these guys really are flashy bright. But at the end of the day, I mean, these are definitely some solid guys in here. Josh Jones having a big role last year. Gerard Wilson the last couple of years. Jalen Camp, as I said, our sixth round pick. You know, I was very high on him being, um, you know, an athletic freak. Quincy Williams from the 2019 class, a thir third round pick. You talk about the 2019 draft class from Dave Caldwell. There's two guys remaining on that roster in Josh Allen and Jawan Taylor. Everybody else is gone. Laquan Treadwell was an absolute training camp stud. Obviously had a nice preseason as well. Had a touchdown last game. Farrah Cooper had a touchdown. Great special teams player as well. Philip Dorsett, Urban Meyer did speak very highly of him and did say that he's going to try to get him back. He's just a little dinged up right now from his words. And Jeff Cotton Jr. played phenomenal weeks two and three. But at the end of the day, I understand some of these cuts, even a guy like Colin Johnson, who's 6'6", and you just can't teach that kind of size and athleticism that he has, but you know, I understand. So let's get on to the 53-man roster breakdown. So I'm going to go position group and talk about the position if I feel as if it's needed. Quarterback, Trevor Lawrence, CJ Beathard, nothing needs to be discussed there. Obviously, we know Gardner Minshew's been traded to Philadelphia. If you want my thoughts on that video, I will link to it above right there for y'all to see. Moving on to the running back position, obviously we lost Travis Etienne for the entire season, man. Prayers up to him, but of course we've still got our thousand-yard rusher in James Robinson, Carlos Hyde, who we brought over from free agency, and then Dari Azigbu or Awagabu. Excuse me. You guys know exactly who I'm referring to. I'm I'm not thinking of Azigbu. I just I can't pronounce his name. <laughs> then moving on to the wide receivers. Very, very noticeable here because the Jags brought in every wide receiver possible known to mankind that you could think of this training camp in this preseason. And they only kept five with DJ Chark, who will be ready for week one. Marvin Jones Jr., LaVisca Chenault, Jamal Agnew, good receiver, you know, return specialist. And then Tavon Austin. If there's one noticeable bright spot on this entire 53-man roster, it's Tavon Austin. This guy was signed days before the first preseason game versus the Cleveland Browns came in scored a touchdown and made an immediate pack on the on the offensive side of the ball this guy came in and made an immediate impact on this team Tavon Austin I was super high on this guy coming out of West Virginia back in the day with Geno Smith I love Tavon Austin and what I've seen from him and obviously Urban Meyer and the staff have seen from him that is the one big noticeable guy I've seen out of this entire 53 man roster breakdown Tavon Austin man mad respect for you then moving on to the tight end position, obviously we lost our old pro tight end and Tim Tebow, but you still got James O'Shaughnessy, Chris Manhurts, and Luke Farrell. Nothing crazy there. I mean, Luke Farrell looked nice. James O'Shaughnessy's been around, and then Chris Manhurts, you know, had a couple nice plays versus the Dallas Cowboys. On to the offensive line, same thing. Nothing really too crazy here. I think AJ Can's actually on the COVID reserve list as we speak, but everyone should be ready for week one, at least in terms of starters. So you got Brandon Linder, Andrew Norwell, Jawan Taylor, Walker Little, our stud left tackle, second round pick who might replace Cam Robinson this year, Tyler Shatley, Will Richardson Jr., and Ben Barch as well. Urban Meyer spoke very highly of Ben Barch. Our fourth round pick out of St. John's. I believe that was last year. I believe he was a fourth round pick. I mean, this guy can honestly take over Andrew Norwell's job if he ends up going down. And Ben Bartz definitely had some nice snaps last season and this year in the preseason. I'm excited to see what he can do too. Now onto the defensive side of the ball. Obviously, we switched schemes this offseason with Joe Cullen coming over from the Baltimore Ravens. So we're really going to be running a 3-4 now. That's why we're keeping extra linebackers and defensive ends. But starting off at D-tackle, you got Roy Robertson Harrison coming over from the Chicago Bears. Devon Hamilton being the biggest piece to this 3-4 defense right there at the nose tackle position. And he's going to break out this year. Mark my words. Malcolm Brown from the New Orleans Saints. Taven Bryan, I'll discuss in a little bit. Jay Tufale, our draft pick this year and Daniel Ukalale excuse me if I couldn't pronounce that either on the defensive end 2019 first round draft pick we got Josh Allen obviously 2020 first round pick Caleb on chase on Jaheed Ward Dewan Smoot he's going to be another solid role player as well this year Jordan Smith Laurenti McRae Adam Godsitz and Aaron Patrick don't know too much about Aaron Patrick 
On to the linebacker position. Obviously, we traded away Joe Show, free agent, but we got Miles Jack, Damian Wilson, Shaq Quarterman, Dakota Allen, and Chappelle Russell. Um, he's definitely had some nice snaps as well throughout the preseason. Damian Wilson's obviously going to be starting alongside Miles Jack. Quincy Williams, as I alluded to earlier, was cut as well. And obviously, his brother's a stud over with the New York Jets. Um, Quentin Williams, so there's the linebacker position for you. Safeties, we got Rayshon Jenkins, Andre Sisco, Daniel Thomas, Rudy Ford, and Andrew Wingard. Another guy I'll discuss alongside with Taven Bryan a little bit later on. I like the safety position a lot. I think they got a lot of great depth. Obviously, Andre Sisco hopefully will be starting week one. Rudy Ford showed a lot of promise defensively. Obviously, he'll be more of a special teams guy. And then Daniel Thomas. I mean, Urban Meyer has said nothing but great things I've heard from Daniel Thomas. I thought he was going to be a potential breakout star for the Jags this year that nobody was really talking about. He got covid he came back, and I mean, he's just been playing phenomenal from everything Urban Meyer saying. Good luck to you, Daniel Thomas. I'm excited to see what you do. Then the cornerback position. Obviously, last night, the Jags traded away Sidney Jones, towards our starting cornerback alongside CJ Henderson last year, but he was traded to the Seattle Seahawks in exchange for a six-round pick. I already did a recap video on that. So we got Shaq Quarterman, CJ Henderson, who's shown the capability of being a lockdown number one corner, Tyson Campbell, who's obviously going to start in the slot, Trey Herndon, and Chris Cr uh, and Chris Claybrooks. Chris Claybrooks has shown a lot of potential, especially in that Dallas game. And, you know, he was really a kick returner, special teams kind of guy last year. But I definitely think he's going to get a lot of defensive snaps this year, maybe in the nickel. We'll kind of have to see what goes on with Chris Claybrooks. But they could probably use him in a multitude of ways. Now, before I get onto the absolute negativity of Taven Bryan and Andrew Wingard, which I will do. Um, let me say, though, that I thought the 53-man roster was actually pretty fair. You know, at the end of the day... Us as Jag fans, you're not going to be able to keep everyone you want. The Jags notably are number one on the waiver wire tomorrow, so they will be very active in going for a wide receiver and running back, as Urban Meyer said. They know who they want to target and which guys that they want to go for, so I'm excited to see what the Jags do tomorrow during the waiver wire, and you know maybe I'll discuss that in a video. I don't really know, but overall, I actually thought that this was a very fair 53-man roster for the most part. Obviously, Taven Bryan and Andrew Wingard, God, I cannot express my level of discomfort and pure hatred for that but you know at the end of the day i have nothing but the most trust and utmost love for urban meyer right now everything he's doing for the city and for this franchise you know surely he sees something in andrew wingard and Taven bryan that us casual fans just can't see at the end of the day so i want to see how that plays out but Taven bryan has shown me nothing three and a half sacks and 11 tackles for a loss since coming into the league i mean calais campbell in his NFL Jacksonville Jaguars debut, week one at Houston, the birth of Saxonville, had more sacks than Taven Bryant's had in the last three years, and Calais Campbell did that in one half. Put that into perspective, okay? This guy was our number one, uh, our first round pick back in 2018. We took this guy over Lamar Jackson. Love you, Trevor Lawrence. You get the point. Andrew Wingard, what the hell is he doing here, man? I mean, I just don't understand. He's not making plays on special teams. He's not doing anything defensively. You know, the four guys I named above him, Rayshon Jenkins, Andre Sisco, Daniel Thomas, and Rudy Ford, all of those guys are better. Gerard Wilson's been here the last couple of years. Like, there's just better guys. I mean, you could have given those two roster spots to guys, maybe like Laquan Treadwell or, you know, Josh Jones, or as I said, Gerard Wilson. Like, there's got to be somebody out there you could have given that roster spot to. But you know what? whatever i'm gonna roll with urban meyer because urban meyer at the end of the day knows what he's doing i'm not going to be too critical of the team i will start judging the jacksonville jaguars and every team in the nfl as of week one that's why i'm not going to overreact so jag fans i want to hear what is your guys's reaction down below to the 53 man roster obviously the most notable things are Taven bryan and andrew wingard unfortunately making this roster but you know what as i said I'm going to roll with it and I'm going to roll with Urban Meyer. I want to hear your guys' thoughts down in the comments below as well. Make sure you guys follow me on all my socials. I'm very active. I will put those in the description down below. It's the best way to reach out to me as well. And if you guys enjoyed the content, make sure you guys like, turn on notifications, and hit that subscribe button for me as well. I'm going to be flying out to Houston week one for Trevor Lawrence and Urban Meyer's NFL debut. I have regular season season tickets as well. Plus, there's going to be a lot of great Jags content coming out, not only this week, but for the entire season. I got a lot of great stuff to share with you guys as well. So thank you guys for the continuous support. Jags Nation, 904, Bold City, Duval, baby. It's been real, y'all. Brett James, aka BJ. I'm out, boys. Peace.